Please, let us stand to welcome the bride. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, I welcome you to this celebration of love. Today, we gather here to witness the exchange of marital vows between Eliza and Joseph. Eliza and Joseph, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends. As today, in the presence of God the Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this day of joy. May he send you help from heaven and protect you May he grant your heart desires and fulfill every one of your prayers.
Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these your servants, Eliza and Joseph, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May I now invite the first reader, Isabel. A reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved, see how he comes, leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the window, he peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice. He says to me, come then, my love, my lovely one, come my dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock, in the coverts of the cliff. Show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. My beloved is mine and I am his. Set me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy relentless as shoal, the flash of it is a flash of fire, a flame of the Lord himself. Love no flood can quench, no torrents drown. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Second reader, Samuel. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Be ambitious for the higher gifts, and I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them. If I have all the eloquence of men or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing. If I have the gift of prophecy, understanding all the mysteries that there are and knowing everything, and if I have faith in all its fullness to move mountains, but without love, then I am nothing at all. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and if I even let them take my body to burn it, but with M without love, it will do me no good, whatever. Love is always patient and kind. Uh, it is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remained in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It was just a few hours ago that we got the news about the new restrictions placed upon Brisbane and some other parts of Queensland, and that necessitated the, the, the decision to celebrate this wedding two hours earlier. But regardless of how disappointing that might seem, we are people of faith. And St. Paul in first letter to Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18, calls us to give thanks to God in all circumstances. And in a sense, what happened and the decision that followed proved 
triumph and also a show of the ability to communicate, to discuss, and make decisions in a relationship. And Eliza and Joseph have demonstrated that capacity and also a show of their love for one another to be able to talk to communicate and form a common front. As I was processing in and looking at Eliza coming forward in procession, something came to my mind. It was interesting to see that among us as she sits here on the altar, she is the most stunning and spectacular person here. Just look at her, isn't she gorgeous? Well, initially I didn't want to say this because I am a priest. <laughs> but anyway, truth has to be told. <laughs> well, sorry, Joseph, I'm not having a go at you. You are okay, okay? <laughs> you know, marriage is a journey. It's a journey of discovery between two people, a man and a woman, who sincerely commit themselves to love, to understanding, and to sacrifice for the good of the other person. This kind of love is captured consistently in the first reading. Love that is strong as death, relentless as Sheho, a love no flood can quench, no torrents drowned. In marriage, we celebrate the mutual giving of oneself to one's partner for the good of that person. In the second reading, from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Paul spoke about the need for patience, for kindness, when it comes to relationship and love. Because love has to be patient, Love is not jealous, never boastful, nor rude. Love is not selfish, but it delights in the truth. A love that is ready always to excuse, to trust, and to hope, to endure whatever comes. This kind of love could be very challenging that is why love, when embraced in a mutual self-giving and sacrifice, endures all circumstance. Most people say that what is most important in a relationship and marriage is love. In a sense, that is true. That there was a minister journeying with young couples. He posed the question, what is the most singular ingredient that is most needed in a relationship? And everybody there said, love. To their greatest surprise, he said, love is the number third on my list behind commitment and communication. And I think he is right. Why? A show of that was shown a few hours ago. The need to communicate. 
and in communicating with love and understanding, you were able to brought forth backward earlier before time this wedding. You know, in relationship without a deep and abiding commitment, people don't really care enough to communicate and to communicate in a very deep and intimate level. So without communication, love begins to wither and die. So Joseph and Eliza, there is no perfect marriage. No perfect marriage anywhere in the world. Even the marriages that have lasted for 10, 20, 30, 50, or 80 years, they have got, at some point, there are challenges, quarrels, and disagreements. But in the midst of all those circumstances, couples that have really lived long in their marriage, they learned never to quit or to jettison the commitment, their commitment in building a home. They deployed communication and dialogue. So that is what you have to also deploy in your own relationship, that commitment to dialogue and to talk things over. And secondly, rely also on the grace of God in whom everything comes to its perfection. You are beginning your hope. It is very easy to build a house. Just save some money, you call a builder or real estate person, and after six months, they will give you a key to a brand new house. Very easy. But it's not that way when it comes to building a home. No one can build your home for you. You will build your home yourselves. Therefore, you did need necessary ingredients and the raw materials to build your home. And those ingredients and raw materials St. Paul mentioned in the second reading we made reference to. It's about patience. It's about letting go. It's about communication. It's about continuous sacrifice and giving yourself to each other. And in the gospel reading today, Jesus reemphasizes the need for us to abide in this love. He said, love as I have loved you. It means that the love shouldn't be selfish. The love should think about the other person and ready to sacrifice. He started, St. Paul started with asking a question, uh, that calling us to be ambitious. And I have to ask, Joseph, are you ambitious? Are you ambitious? Ambitious in a positive sense to build your home together with Eliza? Are you ambitious for greater goods? Then, to build this home, you have to also be the shoulder upon which Eliza might rest her head. That is what self-giving and sacrifice is about in marriage. So I leave you with the words of Jesus. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you love one another as I have loved you 
by this the world we know that you are my disciples when you love one for another by this the world we know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another remember that today's ceremony will not end the journey of your life and your union it will go beyond the dinner the morning breakfast tomorrow or even the honeymoon it is about building and working together all the days of your life learning to forgive to let go and to make sacrifice may god bless you and Joseph. You have come together in this church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community to make known your intention to enter into marriage so that the Lord will strengthen you with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I invite you to state your intentions. Eliza and Joseph. Have you come here to enter into marriage without cohesion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. I have. Are you prepared as to follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. You have to go first, okay? I, Joseph Mail, take you, Eliza Penitza, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you for all of my days. I, Eliza Penitza, take you, Joseph Mail, to be my husband. <laughs> I'm worried, relax, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. <laughs> so, hang on, hang on, relax. Don't, don't go again. Wait. In sickness and in health, I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen and bless the consent you have declared before the church. And may he graciously bring to fulfillment his blessings within you. What God joined together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Free your hand now. Okay. Your weaker hand, your weaker hand.
May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent that you have declared before the church. Lord, bless and sanctify Eliza and Joseph in their love. And let these rings, a sign of their faithfulness, remind them of their love for each other. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eliza. No, no, no. Big hands. Big hands. Big, big, big. Good. Eliza, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joseph. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can now kiss your wife. Let us now stand, please. Prayer of the faithful. I invite John and Henry to come, please. My dear friends, let us pray to our Father in heaven, that he will keep Eliza and Joseph united in undivided love, and that he will bless them throughout their married life. That their love may be patient and gentle, ready to trust, and to endure whatever comes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may pray together in joy and sorrow, and always give, give thanks for the gift of each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bless their daily work and perfect through them his work of creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That his peace may dwell in their home and give, them, give hope of peace to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all married people may be helpful to renew and deepen their love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will bring salvation to the world by expressing Christ's love for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have come into the lives of Eliza and Joseph through the gift of married love. Remain with them always and show your great love for those who call you their father. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Show favor to our supplications, O Lord, and receive with kindly countenance the oblations we offer for these your servants, joined now in a holy covenant, that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for one another and for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chests and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopted as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children bring beauty to the world, their rebirth in baptism gives increase to your church and through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and went entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, Kenneth Cezillary, and all the clergy. Remember us, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray to the Lord for this bride and the groom who come to the altar as they begin this married life and partaking in the sacrifice of the body and blood of Christ, that they may bound together in love for one another. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly also employ by our prayers God's blessing upon this bride and the groom. Holy Father, maker of all the human race and the whole world, who created men and women in your own image and will that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of holy matrimony. May your abundant blessing, O Lord, come upon Eliza and upon Joseph, her companion for life. And may the power of the Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gifts of matrimony, they may adore their family with love and are with their children, enrich them and your church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they speak, seek your help, and may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the Holy Assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after an old age, together with a circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, we who have shared the food of your table, pray for our friends, Eliza and Joseph, whom you have joined together in marriage. Keep them close to you always. May their love for each other proclaim to all the world their faith in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It will be time for you to sign the register now. So you stand.
be with you and with your spirit. Bow and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go, we have a proof that this actually happened. <laughs> so, if you, congratulations. Okay. So, thank you very much. So, I now present to you the newest couple on earth, Eliza and Joseph. Go in peace.